What's the haps? I'm John, aka Maroka, and welcome to Spiral Spiel. We are in Copper Sun on tier 3 today, which is a free stratum, and I managed to write shock in my notes, but then I got here and this is clearly not shock, so I am incorrect, and I am not taking my obsidian edge with me anymore. Let us kill the gremlins with the good old powerful weapon, the one that works. That's the thing. Okay, so let us begin with Spiral Knights news. Yeah! There is none. That's it. Spiral Knights news is done. Nah. Uh, I guess we. I Maybe there are still box promos going on, but that's hardly news because the news was already there last week. Uh, purchase. Yes, we can still buy slime boxes. That's a thing. That's confirmed. You can still buy those. It's still July, so presumably the titanium boxes are still doing the rounds. That was uh, poor placement on my part. And yeah, promos. Promos are fun, right? Keep doing promos. And I guess, obviously, we had the prophecy that the gunner update would land last week. That turned out not to be the case. It turns out that was uh, merely, merely japery jokes. Funnies. And not very, fu not very funny ones at that. They were more disappointing than hilarious. But there you go. So that's not gonna update yet. And well, obviously, as is going to be uh, the standard for the foreseeable future, I am recording these on Tuesday, so you never know. If you play your cards right and pray to Vog, uh, it's possible the gonna update might be out by the time this video goes live. But at time of recording, uh, all we have to do is cooling chambers. We have no guns to play with, just the cooling chambers. So, yeah, nothing really exciting in that regard. However, there is a thing I found this week which I feel like could relate to Spiral Knights if you wanted it to. Which is to say, I'm on by virtue of my being some sort of vaguely gaming press type person, but not really very. I, I have ended up on a bunch of sort of gaming press mailing lists and there's a lot of people, some people send you games to review and I like those people. Some people just send you every single Kickstarter from the sun and I don't know why I haven't unsubscribed from those lists yet, but apparently I haven't. And basically occasionally, occasionally you do find something that's kind of interesting and worth a look. And in this case it actually wasn't even a game. Someone sent me a Kickstarter for a, well, 3D printing is what it was. Uh, the claim they were making was that if you sent them a screenshot of whatever character you want, be it your MMO character or, I don't know, pick, pick a character from any game you like. If you want Lara Croft, I'm sure they'll do that. The idea was you could pick any game character, send them some screenshots so they, uh, they have plenty of material to work with. Then their team of 3D modelers will take those screenshots and model that character themselves so that they can print it uh, in 3D, which is an extraordinarily labor-intensive process when you consider that presumably the model files must already exist for pretty much all of these things already because they had to exist for the game to be made in the first place. They are doing, uh, like, they do offer 2D characters which are a little cheaper than for the 3D characters, so I guess those probably don't exist in 3D. They have to take, they would have to take Pac-Man or Sonic or whatever. Well, I suppose there are three medievals of Sonic, but I'm thinking old school's 2D Sonic. I saw something interesting on that log on that wheel. What was that? Was that a titanium box? I saw something that looked like black and purple. I haven't been playing much in July, so I haven't actually seen the titanium lock boxes up close and personal myself, but I saw something on the wheel there that I hadn't seen before. Anyway, uh, yes. Anyway, there is, yes, as I say, 3D printing. So, presumably... Uh, you could potentially send them some pictures of your Spiral Knights character and get them to print that for you, which I think would be kind of cool. That's certainly a service that has been offered by the World of Warcraft. So not, not necessarily by World of Warcraft, it's, an, it's a service that is like partnered with Blizzard to do World of Warcraft characters. Those have been around for a while. Why do I want Legion Marmite? I don't. I want Paladin. Paladin is my loadout. And I, since I haven't updated these, I suspect my health is still stuck at... Oh, it is healthy boost 6. That's okay. That's nice to know. Some of, them, some of these are still woefully out of date after that shocking revelation from last week that uh, they don't update properly. So that was fun. So yeah, it's, it's a very similar process. 
Uh, I am I am a man who is into my 3D printing myself. There's a place nearby me that I have gone into. I've, I've rambled about this on previous episodes. There's a place just down the road from me that offers 3D printing services to the public for free, which is really awesome. But this is a different, it's kind of a more advanced one. The standard one... Um, I'm not sure what the methodology is called, I'm sure there's a very technical term for the standard 3D printing, but basically the way that works is they squeeze a long string strand of uh, thin plastic through a nozzle at a very high temperature and it lands on a platform and it just sort of builds it up in layers, it prints one slice of the image at a time and it builds it out of plastic. But because, because of the way that works, you know, logistically speaking, it's kind of... Uh, it's difficult to do overhangs, say for example, I mean the one I would always let, have loved to have done and still have my sights at some point in my lifetime uh, doing is, well, Morocco with the chapeau. Not necessarily in my halo, but with the chapeau. And the chapeau would be terribly difficult to print, just on the basis that, uh oh, uh oh, I'm trapped, I'm trapped. Uh, just on the basis that it kind of overhangs. Oh, I see. Something popped up behind as well. You're ambushing me. Okay. So it would take uh, take some tricky building. You'd have to build it in stages, or it would have a lot of support structure, which would be kind of a mess to clean off. Uh, the way this new technology works, uh, selective laser sintering is the name of the technology. And what that does is it puts down like a layer of powder. It's you, I think you can use different materials, but the most common ones, specifically the World of Warcraft ones do, what these guys are looking to do. It's uh, like powdered gypsum, I believe it is, which ultimately the finished product ends up looking like sandstone. And what they do is they take a laser, a freaking laser, and they will fire it at this layer of powder. And I think where the laser strikes the powder, it will fuse it together into, into basically like a sandstone kind of structure. And... Basically, it keeps doing that. So it'll do one layer. It'll it'll laser the bits that need to be solid, and then it will put down another layer of powder and laser the next bits that need to be solid. And it'll keep doing that it's same same way it does with the plastic. It'll just build up layer after 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 layer. After layer, after layer, after layer. Uh, um, words, words, words. I'm garbling all the words there because I'm saying too many things too fast. But you get you get the picture. You kind of see where I'm going with that. So layers, many layers, much like ogres or onions. Uh, I, just, I saw some internet discussion about ogres and onions earlier, so that was in my mind. Layers. I don't know. Shrek is love, Shrek is life, and all that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, layers. So you build it up out of stone, and ultimately your finished product is kind of a sandstony kind of figurine. And because it, because the any overhangs with that are kind of supported by the layers of powder that's already been, been placed underneath it, uh, it's, it doesn't need any particular sport structure. You can build overhangs, uh, you can build it any freaking shape you want. And uh, ultimately all you do is once it's built, you can reach into a big pile of sand and pull out your figurine from the middle of the pile of sand. And whatever's left in there can actually just be recycled. They'll just take the big old pile of sand or powder or whatever and just pour it back into the machine and reuse it. So there's no wastage there either, which is kind of cool. Uh, I'm not sure quite how they do colours, I guess they must add some dyes to it, and that sounds like that would be tricky to recycle, but I guess it kind of works somehow. I don't know the specifics. I've never had the opportunity to work with such technologies. I would love to work with such technologies, but at the moment those machines are still very, very big and expensive. We are talking thousands, if not tens of thousands for one of those, whereas your little sort of plastic extrusion kind of for printing, that's actually more in the sort of home market, home, yeah, the sort of home market, I guess, uh, price range these days. You can build yourself a little maker bot or what have you, uh, plastic extrusion 3D printer for a few hundred pounds or dollars or whatever, pick a currency, and they're, they're pretty accessible these days. As I say, there's a place down the road from me that has one and they will let you use it for free because they're lovely people. And if you want one yourself, like I say, they're not hard to come by, but these, these things are pretty big and expensive, so if you're gonna buy one, it's gonna be for industrial purposes. You're going to be trying to run a business with it, basically. And that's kind of what these guys are doing, except through Kickstarter, I guess. If you go onto their website, they're kind of offering it as a service to games. Like, I think they, their clients would be, they'd be looking at people like, say, Three Rings. They would go to Three Rings and say, hey, we can do, th we can do 3D models of your game's characters. Would you like us to make and sell 3D models of your game's characters? Hey, he got stuck in a wall. Haha. 
And then three rings goes, no, that's a terrible idea, there's no market for that. Or, yes, that is a wonderful idea, please let us pay you money in order to sell things to our player base. And I bet you anything they would sell. Whether they would sell enough to be a profitable venture or not, I don't know, but I can guarantee you that if Spiral Knights figurines came on the market in the same way that those World of Warcraft ones do, I would buy it. Make no mistake. But at any rate, as I say, you could potentially get these guys to model your Spiral Knights character for you, and then uh, you could get it printed. However, you'd be looking at, they are charging uh, just shy of 200 uh, US dollar dues per figurine. It's about, uh, there. for some reason, it's, uh, I think it's Canadian dollars, is, it? is their campaign? I guess the company's Canadian. That would probably make sense. That would be why they're doing that. And yeah, so it's 230 Canadian dollars, I think, is what they're asking. I could be wrong, you'd have to go check it. Anyway, the company, if you're looking for it, uh, it is Shape It! Shape It 3D Printed Characters. So that's, that's something to keep an eye out for if you're interested in that kind of thing. And have some money to spare on something cool. I, uh, I gotta say, I am tempted. They are offering a bunch of different ones. I saw the purple and black, purple and purple thing. Purple, purple, black thing. Again. I, I just looked at my other page and caught, caught that out of the corner of my eye. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, $200 is for a about a uh, four inch tall figurine, I think, uh, in full color. And then they're doing like a three inch and a one and a half inch or something. They're doing like a large, medium and small size. And the medium and smalls only come in white, so you would have to paint it yourself. But then the large four inch figurine would be uh, but would be uh, in full color, so you would not in, would not need to paint it. So, if you if you are if you're into your like Warhammer type things, you might want it in white, but otherwise, color is good. So what have we got here? We want to bring a or not a sword. We don't want to bring a sword. That's not what we want. We want a a bleats. Bring us a bleats. That would be a thing. Let's do that. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, I would recommend checking that out. There's another Kickstarter that I did whilst trying to... I, I got that email and then tried to remember it later and went hunting for it. And I found another Kickstarter which I ended up backing. Uh, that has now ended, but it was them creating like fantasy coins with a like oriental kind of style. You've got like uh, ancient Chinese tribal... not tribal... Um, I can't, I, I'm not, I don't know, there is, there is a name for it, it's one of these things where there is a specific term for it that I forget, but they, oh, it's very sort of, um, oldie fashioned Chinese temple kind of writing script kind of thing on the coins, and some absolutely beautiful artwork on it, and it's intended for like tokens and coins and things for like role playing games and tabletop games and stuff, and it's like, I have no idea when I'm going to use these, but they are gorgeous and I must have them, so I've backed that. We should do a Kickstarter news bit now that I have money. <laughs> maybe maybe that could be a thing. Or maybe not. I don't back that much, but... This has been a kickstarter -y week for me. I've been... Oh yeah, that thing doesn't disappear immediately. Whoopsie! Ow! No! I am... Ah! I am got! Ah! Let me out! Oh no, the spikes! I am so got! Oh. They got me! Right, let's pop a peel. Grab me peels. Because we haven't made that joke enough times in Spiral Nights yet. That joke will never get old. Never. Oh my word, at all these guys. Why don't you just get a blitz to the face? Oh lord. Ow, no. Peel again. Give me the peels. Let's try and clear them out a bit. You're dead. That's one down. That's a good start. So, uh, what else did I have to talk about? Oh, uh, I, I have, hmm, this is an interesting one. I have another job interview coming up. I got a phone call today uh, from Germany. And, uh, well, there's kind of only like one option for who could possibly be calling me from Germany. I don't know any German people, I'll be honest. Uh, but, uh, about two to three months ago, shortly after PAX, uh, mostly because of like uh, Joe Marabello from Terrible Posture Games and Tower of Guns, go buy that game if you haven't, uh, from his sort of encouragement and he's saying, oh, I'll give you a reference within the games industry and he was kind of pushing me at the time, so I was kind of a bit more focused on trying to get into the games industry. So I applied to Eria Games 
And, you know, normally with most jobs, if you don't hear much back from them within, like, four weeks, it's like, it's a pretty good assumption you ain't got the job. And then suddenly today, I get the phone call from Eria Games. Would you like to have an interview? Uh, yes, yes I would. Um, kind of an awkward place to be taking that kind of phone call, given that I'm now, I'm just kind of in the office with my new boss with the job I just started a week and a half ago. Little bit awkward in that regard, I will grant you that. Um, yeah. So, I, they, they want to do a phone interview for me, with me tomorrow. I don't think I can, but I will try and reschedule something, because I want to, I want, I want to interview for that. It's going to be a community manager stroke game master kind of thing. And I would really, really, really like to do that job. I, I uh, well, I would really like to do the job. I, um, pretty terrified about the idea of moving to do a job in a country where I don't speak the language and where I know nobody whatsoever. That would be really... Uh, I don't know, I'm not I'm not that adventurous a person normally speaking, that's way out of my comfort zone. But at the same time, what's the alternative? Sort of keep doing a job I hate with a guy I dislike for the next few years and hoping I will hate it and dislike it less? I don't know. Mm. It's, it, it would be a very, very tempting op offer, but uh, I don't know about Germany. That's really... I am so not a adventurous, see the world, meet people I can't understand kind of person. I like to stay where it is safe and I can understand the language. The language is an important one. I like to be able to communicate with people. I don't... I mean, they offer, uh, part of the perks of the job, they do offer German lessons, and it is, they are looking for an English-speaking game master, because, well, they are an, uh, it's, it's an MMO company, or, well, they, they don't specifically make MMOs themselves, but they host them, they're like, they steam for free-to-play MMOs kind of thing, if you're not familiar with them. I imagine a number of the, my viewers and the player base of Spiral Knights probably are familiar with Eerie Games, just on the basis that, well, Spiral Knights is actually distributed through Eerie Games, so that's kind of an interesting one in its own regard. I don't imagine I would be a GM for Eria. Uh, it would be uh, for Spiral Knights, because I would be a GM for Eria, but again, they don't make their own games, so what do they need a GM for is kind of the interesting point. I don't know. It's a weird kind of role, but I think I could dig it, you know? I have to play it by ear and see how it goes. I mean, heck, I'm just, at kind of, I'm just kind of at interview stage here. There's nothing to really make of it, but, uh, yeah, should should be interesting, if nothing else. Also of interest is things I am not a real particularly at liberty to talk about, but uh, things are afoot with Button Mash in so far as the events go. Uh, hopefully most of you will be aware that Button Mash was founded first and foremost not to make uh, entertaining Spiral Knights and other gaming videos on YouTube. Uh, we actually started doing video gaming events in Bradford in West Yorkshire in the United of Kingdoms. And we, we continue to do events to this day, but we're kind of looking at doing uh, more interesting things within the near future. And if you're not following along with what we're doing there, you should totally be doing so like us on Facebook and on the Twitters and you'll stay abreast of all the latest developments in the worlds of mush the mashing of buttons and all the awesome things we're doing because we will be doing awesome things that I can assure you of right now so is that is that all from me and news this week I think possibly let us let us do some questions some user submitted questions because those are always kind of fun that's kind of it was kind of the main point of this series I have I have deviated from doing quite so many of late and I would still appreciate people sending me them but um, I have had I've had less frequent questions in the last few months I spe I suppose at any rate, uh, we have some Spiral Knightsy type questions from Elite JHD, uh, who says, "What's the best way to get eternal orbs of alchemy?" Eternal? It's Vanaduke. There's just no other real option. Just do Vanaduke, or any high-level mission will be a pretty good way of doing it. But you know, your danger missions are good, your shadow lairs are good, but you're likely to die in them. The safest and best, most reliable option to get Eternal Orbs is Vanaduke. If you are not yet at the level at which you can do Vanaduke, uh, well then you're going to struggle. 
and uh, you should probably just try and find some really, really nice people who don't mind taking you with them, if that's kind of where you're at. I saw the thing, but I didn't get a good look at the thing again. I need to get the thing. Give me the thing. Show me the thing. I want the thing. It's a purple thing. Purple and black thing. Maybe they're just going to give me an obsidian edge. Ooh, this is the thing. Uh, it, Agent A uh, sent me a little bit of a lecture through the mail system about obsidian edge. Uh, he said, uh, the reason I was whinging about the Obsidian Edge, I didn't use these words, but I'm, I'm, I'm being colourful here. Uh, yeah, the reason I was whinging about the Obsidian Edge being underpowered is because it was level 1 where my Asheron is level 10. Uh, I actually thought I had mentioned that. Did I not mention that? I thought that was a thing I had dealt with at some point. Um, I, I am aware of this fact, but that doesn't make it more palatable. I, yes, that's 6. Good. It's still... We're still living under the under the reins of the radiant the radiant fire crystal system, which means it will be many a year before any obsidian edge would be comparable to my Asheron at this point. Asheron was heated up under the good old days, the heady days of no fire crystals. These days, five star stuff uh, languishes in semi heated incompleteness forever. As will my obsidian edge, unless I really make an absolutely concerted effort over a long period of time to get that up to a five star. And that's just kind of not really going to happen. I understand the poison has some utility, but it is kind of offset by the lack of damage at the moment. Perhaps the poison would work, have some nice synergy with the damage at the higher levels, but right now I would rather things just die to my blade when I swing it. That's where I'm at with the Obsidian Edge versus Asheron kind of debate. Give me Asheron, that's all I know. Uh, okay, what else? Uh, going back, I, mean, I, I skipped a little bit. Uh, Elite JHD also said, and uh, Drakonos kind of stole my thunder a little bit by answering it in the comments. Uh, which was when you buy a sprite pod, do you keep your sprites and have an option, or have an option to choose between the between the two? Uh, yes, when you buy another sprite, uh, you go to the supply depot and you purchase it, or you purchase it from another player who has probably bought it from the supply depot, because uh, that's pretty much the main way of getting them. There's not really many other options that I'm aware of. Uh, so if you buy it from another player, they will just be selling it to you at some obscene markup, no doubt. So when you buy it from the supply depot, it will go into your inventory. It is equipped like an item. Top of your inventory, I don't know if you've ever noticed, up here we've got this slot called Battle Sprites, and I have Pixel, my little kitty cat. For those who have been curious, uh, named after Ian McConville, the lead artist on Spiral Knight's Cat, who is also named Pixel. And if you go read his webcomic, which is 3panelsoul.com, uh, you will, and troll back through the archives for a very, very long time, you will find that obscure and bizarre tidbit of information. That is a thing. <laughs> so that is why Pixel is called Pixel. Someone did ask that and I didn't write that one down, so I apologize to whoever asked about Pixel's name. Um, yeah. That's your answer to Pixel's name! Uh, yeah, you can equip Pixel as a weapon. He is my weapon! See? He goes, laser! That's totally an effective weapon, right guys? So yeah, you, you, it's just a weapon. You equip it in your slots like any other weapon and you get, you would just, if I had more than pixel, if I had a mask wraith, they would be there and I could click and right, right click and select equip or left click in fact. Yeah, left click and well, I have no other options so I can't equip it, but if there was another one there it would say equip this or actually it would say can't, it, right now it would say can't change equipment because I'm not at an arsenal station, but uh, generally speaking, I thought there were some monsters that looked too easy. It's never just free loot. No such thing as a free free loot box. And we've got a phantom sneaking in from behind. I see he's here over there. Oh yeah, you thought you could be sneaky, huh? Pow! I tank you with my shield and then finish you off with my sword. Haha! -ha! So yeah, those are those are Spiral Nightsy based comment and questions. And as I said, Dracronos, thank you for answering that question in the comments for me, I guess. I feel a little bit put out. People are stealing my comments from under my nose. Uh, that's, this is why I like more sort of opinion and uh, uh, sort of just random personal preference type questions. What's your favorite X? What do you think about Y? And have you seen Z? Do you know about this? These kind of things are something I can talk about a bit more rather than just go do Vanaduke as an answer or someone else telling you to just go do Vanaduke as an answer. 
So yes, please leave your please leave your questions in the comments below, because then I will be able to answer them in the future, and I will give you a mini shout out with them as well, and that would be awesome. And geez, there are a lot of these bombs here. This takes a little while to get through, doesn't it? What's the point of this three rings? Why are we doing this? Thank you. So yeah, ooh, there's an energy gate. Is that worth spending on? I suspect not. Uh, not in Stratum 5. In Stratum 6 I might be tempted. You would be talking potentially some Radiance there? That might be worth looking at. I don't think there'll be too much in there on floor 22 though. So I have uh, one question that I have left on my uh, pad of paper, my notepad of paper. Which is not actually paper, it is a notepad document, but nonetheless. Uh, one of one from Skyside's big list of questions. TM from weeks back that will still be going through in episode 100. Not that I number these things anymore, but internally numbered, uh, you know. Uh, we have, uh, what do you think about the uh, opinions on those crazy competitive YouTube beaters? What are the most vomit inducing and impressive feats you'd seen? I honestly, uh, I'm not into the competitive eating scene on YouTube. I will be honest. I have not seen these. I wasn't uh, particularly aware it was a thing. It does not particularly surprise me that it is a thing, but I was not actively aware that it was a thing. So, yeah. Uh, oh, there are a few zombies remaining. I did wonder if there might be. And I feel like I'm rubber banding slightly. Uh, I will say, however, I am quite the fan of the TV show Man vs. Food. Because that is one of well, one of the, the terrible American fare that did make it over to this side of the pond, and I don't know it's pretty it's pretty entertaining. <laughs> I got to be honest, it's just, just just to see the food is just like, man, that looks tasty. I would really like to try my hand at eating that thing, whatever it might be, whether it be a volcano of nachos or a pizza the size of a car. I don't know. Uh, I did at one point download through uh, um, the entirety of Man V Food Season 1. I have not actually particularly got around to watching much of it, though there is one in like Season 1 where he's... It's, he's not, it's not a huge eating challenge, it's a spicy food thing. And for me that one doesn't actually look all that impressive. I really like my spicy food. I like things with lots of chilies and curry and the hotter the better for me. And he's like, oh, this this curry is made with habanero peppers. Habanero peppers are 50 times spicier than jalapenos. And I'm like, yeah, but jalapenos aren't spicy. I will quite happily munch on them. They're just tasty, these jalapenos to me. It's like, you're saying they're 50 times hotter, but... 50 times hotter than nothing is still nothing. 50 times zero is zero, you know? I know jalapenos aren't actually zero on the hotness scale, but eh, to me it's just like, it's not that impressive. I mean, you can buy bottles of habanero sauce and I will quite happily eat that stuff raw again. Yeah, it's tasty stuff. I saw the box there. That was a box. That's got to be the titanium one now. I still didn't see what it was called, but I got a good look at the box. It was interesting, I and mean, it's still not giving me any of them. Maybe if I open some things with a silver key, it will give me a titanium lock box. Maybe that's how I do it. Or maybe that's not worth it. Perhaps. I don't know. Leave your leave your opinions on lock boxes in the comments below. Where I will steadfastly mock you for being a gambling addict. If you are a gambling addict. If you're not, then I will not. I will commend you on not being a gambling addict. Congratulations, you are clean and sober. At any rate, what has Basil for me today? I don't normally make it down this far. I haven't done this in a little while. Uh, ooh, royal jelly. Is that a thing people might want? I don't know. Um, I don't. It's a thing people might want. How well it's likely to sell is um, of less. Le it's less convincing. Uh, I think we're going to leave that for ooh, silver six. People might want a silver six. Yes, I will have. I will have the silver six. That's my shopping for today. Sweet. Anyway, yes, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have not checked out my Patreon, there is, it will be a Patreon in the link in the outro in just a hot second, so you can check that out there if you wish to support me a little further there with extra rewards for Patreon supporters. And if you want to leave a comment, please do so below, and then I will attempt to answer it in the very near future, and you'll get a mini shout out with that. And that should probably just about wrap it up for today. So thank you very much for watching. I have been Maroka. And I shall see you next time.